In this video, I'm going to show you how to create blog post grid in Elementor. This tutorial will be helpful if you have an Elementor website and you want to add a blog post grid on the home page of your website. And this is what we will achieve by the end of this tutorial coming up. Hello guys, this is Swadik here at Digo Pages Web, where I do web tutorials just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. That said, let's jump into the video. So to create a blog post grid in Elementor like this one, I'm going to install a plugin. And this is the plugin I'm going to install, Premium Add-ons for Elementor. I've already installed and activated it, so I suggest you do the same. Having installed and activated the plugin, I open the home page of my website with Elementor. And I want to add my blog post grid immediately under the hero section of my website. You can add it to whatever section you want. To do that, I first of all have to add in a section. So I click on add new section and I'll use a single column section. I go over to advanced. I unlink the values under padding and I'm going to go ahead and add in a space of 50 pixels at top and 50 at bottom. Next, I go over to widgets, then I drag in the heading widgets. I change the title to popular post and I align it to the center. The styling is okay by me. However, if you want to change it, you go over to style where you can change the color, typography, and minimal. I leave mine as it is. Next, I go over to widgets, then I'm going to search for blog. And I'll be presented with this blog widget. And at the upper right hand corner, you see PA. This is the abbreviation for premium add ons for Elementor. So we are getting this particular widget as a result of installing the premium add ons for Elementor plugin. So what I do is I just click on it and I drag it in here under the heading widget. And now we'll be presented with edit blog pane. And this is how our blog post will display it. Awesome. Now let's take a look at the features here, one after the other. The first one we have is general. First, let's look at skin and the general. The skin is set to classic. At the moment, you can choose modern. And this is how modern will look like. You see that part of the text is lying on the image. And this is cool. You can also see cards. On side. And finally, banner perfect so choosing any of this will depend upon what you want for now i take it to classic you can toggle off grid if you don't want to use grid so if you are not using grid this is how your blog post will display i enable grid and the layout we have two features that is even and masonry at the moment it's even with even you have the opportunity to use equal height that is, if maybe some of the titles are longer than others, you can use this equal height feature to make all your cars have the same height. We don't have that option under masonry. You see that it is gone. I prefer to use the even. At the moment, the number of columns is set to two. So in here, you drop down the arrow and you can choose whichever number of columns you want. If I take it to four, this is how four will look like. You can even go ahead and increase the number of posts per page. Maybe I want it to be 8. So this is how it will come up. I just want to show you how it works. For me, I'm going to use 3 columns. And the number of posts per page, I'll make it 6. And this is cool for me. If you are finding value so far, please give this video a thumbs up. It does help me out so that the video will be suggested to more people on YouTube and also benefit more people. All right, let's continue. Next, I'll go over to query. The source of my query is post and you can choose whatever you want. And since we want to deal with post, I don't think choosing any of this will be ideal except post. So I leave it as post. Next is categories filter rule. From here, you can choose match categories or exclude categories. So if it is set to match categories, whatever categories you enter in here, for instance, personal finance, it will give you all blog posts on personal finance. However, if you exclude categories and you enter in personal finance here, it will take off all personal finance blog posts, as you can see right here. You see that the current query has no post. So for now, 
I take it back to match categories and I'm not going to use any filter here. So I remove this so that it will display all categories I have on my website. The same thing is applicable to tax. You can match tax or exclude tax and you can go ahead and filter them from here. You can even filter by author and by post. So customizing any of this will depend upon what you want to achieve at the end of the day. Next is ignore sticky post. With this feature, you'll be able to ignore sticky posts. That is, if you make some posts sticky, you can make your post sticky by going to your blog post. Maybe if I come here, I'll open that in a new tab. If I hover on any of my blog posts, then I click on quick edit. This way you can make your blog post sticky so that you'll be on top of all your blog posts. It should be noted that most recent blog posts will be on top. So if you make the very first blog post sticky, it will always be on top. So that is what this particular feature will do. If you have sticky posts and you toggle this on, the premium add-ons for Elementor blog widget will take off the sticky post. That is if you enable this. So this is not all that necessary because we don't really have any sticky posts on our website. Next is offsets. This particular feature will exclude any number of initial posts from being displayed. For instance, this is my recent blog post. If I don't want to see this, what I can do is I can increase this offset to one. And you see that the first one is off. If I increase this to two, this particular one will be off and this will now show as my most recent blog post on my home page. So I increase this to two and the first one will go off and you will now see this particular one. I don't want to do this, so I take it back to zero. Next, let's see order by. At the moment, my blog posts are ordered according to date. So this means that this particular blog post was the very last one I created. And in here, you wouldn't even see the first blog post I created. Simply because I have nine blog posts on my website. And at the moment, I'm displaying only six right here. So apart from ordering it by date, you can choose any of these ordering methods. And since this particular section is for popular posts, I'll assume my popular post to be a particular post with more comments. So I'll drop down the arrow here and I'll choose number of comments, even though I don't have any comments right now, but I just want to show you how it works. So at the moment, this is the most popular post on my website and you can also order it in descending or ascending order. I'll leave it as descending. Next is featured image. Featured image is the image we see right here. In here, you can toggle off featured image if you don't need it. You see that they are off. I'll bring it back by toggling on. Image size is set to full. You can choose whatever size you want. I leave it as full. Hover effect at the moment is zoom. And I want to go ahead and use grayscale. So if I hover on my featured images, they will now turn into a grayscale. And I like it that way. I leave the rest of the settings as they are. Next is display options. First of all is the title tag. You can change it from A2 to whatever tag you want. A2 is good for SEO. That is search engine optimization. So I leave it as H2. Next is row spacing. Row spacing is a spacing right here. That is the spacing that separates the cars on top and the cars below. So at the moment it is set to 5 pixels. So if I make it 50, you see the spacing. So the same thing, you can increase the spacing for columns. 50, you see that. So whatever spacing you want will depend upon what you want to achieve at the end of the day. I leave mine as the default, that is 5 for column and 5 for rows. Next is alignment. At the moment, it is aligned to left. You can choose center, that is the text, right, or even justify. For me, align left will do, so I take it to left. Next is post options. The first feature is show post content. This is the post content that is the except. What we see right here, from here to here is the post content. And you can get the content from post except or full content. Let me choose full content. So this is how it will look like. With this, it will give you all the content on your blog post. Choosing any of this will depend upon what you want. I take it back to post except. The except type 
is set to dots you can choose link and it will give you this read more button you can even go ahead and change the read more text from here i will keep it as dots and i'm not really going to show post content right here so i go ahead and toggle it off next we have the author meta that is the name of the author date right here categories which is showing here and then finally comments which is here the only thing i want to display here is categories meta so i toggled all this off like this and it will give me only categories next i go to advanced settings so here you can enable this feature in order to load more posts on scroll so if i enable this you see that it is trying to load you see this feature working perfectly when you have a ton of blog posts on your website i'm not going to use it anyway so i toggle it off you can also use filter tabs and it will give you a filter on top you'll be able to see all categories you can also see only personal finance categories and any other categories you have on your website i don't want to use filter tabs next is change post html tag to article i don't really know what this feature does if i toggle it on you wouldn't see any changes so i just go ahead and toggle it off and finally we have links in new tab with this if visitors click on any of these blog posts it will open in a new tab and i don't think that is cool to see how this particular feature works i'll update my page and i'll preview the changes so if i go ahead and click on any of these blog posts you see that it will open in a new tab and i don't want that so i exit out of here then i'll go ahead and toggle this off next is carousel now if i enable this my blog post will change into a slider so i can slide from here perfect you can even make it play automatically by enabling autoplay and the speed will depend upon the number of milliseconds you have set here at the moment it is set to 5000 milliseconds which is equal to 5 seconds you can even set the number of slides to scroll from here at the moment it is scrolling three slides so if i choose one it will hide one post at a time perfect so if you want to use this feature you can go ahead and customize this just the way you want i'm not going to use it so i go ahead and toggle it off and finally we have pagination i enable pagination and you see the pagination numbers right here but i don't think this feature will be cool on the home page so i just go ahead and toggle it off and that's all about the content tab next we can go over to style first under style is image if you want to add in a color for the image you can just go in here and choose whatever color you want for instance if i choose red and i hover on my images you see how it will come up but i don't want to use this feature so i just remove the color next is title the typography is cool so i don't do anything here i like the font size and the font itself next is color from here you can choose whatever color you want I'll just go ahead and enter in the color code I want to use 444343. I exit from here. Next, I go over to hover and I'll enter in the hover color code 8D8D8D. Awesome. I exit from here. Next is bottom spacing. This particular feature will provide some spacing in between the title and the categories. So if I go here, and I increase it like this, you see that. I don't want to tamper with the spacing, so I take off the figure I have here. Next, I go to Meta. This is where you can change the typography and color of the categories. The typography is cool. I go to Meta Color. This time around, I'll choose my global colors and I'm going to use this blue. Next is Links Hover Color. I go to Custom. And I'm going to use the text color. Perfect. This is cool. That's all about meta. Next, I go to content box. I'm not really going to do anything in here, but let me just show you how you can use some of the features. Maybe background color. It has to do with the background color of the text here. So if I come in here and I choose any color, you see that. But this is ugly. 
I'm not really going to use it. So I clear the color. So next we can go to box. This is where you can change the background color. That is this grid color we are seeing right here. At the moment, it is this color that is F5, F5, F5. For me, this color is cool. But if you don't need this color, all what you need to do is click in here and choose whatever color you want. You can even go ahead and add in a border type. I make it solid. You see that. But I don't need a border. Just want to show you the possibilities. You can add in border radius if you want. Maybe 10. And you see that you have some border radius. I don't need border radius, so I take it off. The only thing I want to work on here is spacing and padding. Spacing is the space that separates the cards. So for spacing, I make it 10 pixels across all sides. You see that. And the pattern, I'm going to go ahead and enter in 5. But before I do that, if you look at the image right here, you see that it's in line with the gray color right here. But the moment I enter in some pattern, first of all, let me enter 20. You cannot see a space right here, and that is what the pattern is about. For now, I'll take it to 5. That's all what I want to do, and I'm happy with my section, so I click on Update. Let's preview the changes. Perfect. I like this. Awesome. I exit out of here. So that's it on how to create a popular post section for our homepage. Thank you for watching and see you in the next class. Alright guys, I hope you found value in today's video. If you did, kindly hit the like button, subscribe if you have not yet subscribed and also hit the notification bell so that each time I post a new video on this channel, you will be the first to know. Keep watching and I will see you in the next one.